Hi guys, it's Alex Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. It's time to talk about some of the stuff that I've been sniffing in June. I'm always constantly trying new things and discovering things, being let down by things. And I'm trying to make it a monthly thing to talk to you about five discoveries and five disappointments. So let's do it. So I always like to start with a disappointment because that way I will end on a discovery and we like good vibes on this channel. So the first disappointment is Don Le Pot and it's by Louis Vuitton. I had the sample for quite a long time, but recently I actually did a proper skin test and wore it for a day. The reason it's a disappointment is I was expecting it to be a leather perfume. In my head, Louis Vuitton, leather bags, I know they do lots of other stuff, but um, yeah, Louis Vuitton, I associate with fabulous leather bags, right? Uh, it's not leather at all. What it is, is a very simple, verging on characterless kind of magnolia smell. And magnolia is nice, but that's just it. it it's, it's nice, it's nice, it's, it's okay. And even if it was a magnolia that was interesting, that would have been fine, but it was a kind of run-of-the-mill, one-noted magnolia perfume that reminded me of, there's a brand called Commodity, and they make kind of single-ish noted perfumes that you're supposed to layer. And their single magnolia perfume was actually nicer than this Louis Vuitton one. So it's the first fragrance I've tried from Louis Vuitton. I didn't know what to expect but it turned out to be a bit of a fail. So that's why it's on the disappointment list. The next discovery is a Guerlain perfume and it's called Song d'un bois de Det. I can't even pronounce that one. This one I'd smelled before. I sniffed it in my Guerlain Sniffapalooza live that I did way back, way back. I can't remember when it was in the middle of lockdown. Tried it then and liked it, but now have recently fully worn it and absolutely love it. It does not smell like a Guerlain perfume. There's this really strong Guerlainard, they call it, thing. You know, it's a strong Guerlain signature. You can, a lot of the time, feel when you're wearing or smelling a Guerlain perfume. This one doesn't smell like one, but it doesn't matter. It's really great. It's actually quite a sharp, dark, woody perfume. It's very, it, it almost feels like oud. It's kind of bitter, but in a very good way. And it's, very evening and it's strong and there's always an elegance to Guerlain perfumes and this one I feel kind of throws that out of the window. There's no smoothness in this one. It's great. It feels like dark woods. It feels like mahogany and oak and then this oodiness as well. It's kind of spiky and sharp and I was surprised by it and really impressed by it when I wore it. So that's why it's on the discovery list. I don't think it's something I would buy, but I definitely like it. If you're into ouds, if you're into that kind of Middle Eastern style thing, this would be Guerlain's take on that for me. That's how it felt. So, Bois Song de Duet de Det. I'll put the name here because I can't say that one. Soz. The next disappointment is a sample that I've also had for a really long time and only really tried it in passing, but this time I fully wore it. It's by a brand called Glossier and the perfume is called You. Hugely popular makeup brand. I used to work right next to the pop-up shop in London that was around two years ago and it had the biggest queue outside it all day, every day. People just queuing, 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 but they have a perfume and a friend of mine gave me it and said you should try it, this brand is all the rage and it was incredibly disappointing but I can understand why they made it the way they did. So let me explain. Glossier are a brand that attracts a lot of millennials and millennials aren't really into perfume. It's not really a thing for them. I have first hand experience and conversations with a lot of them working in the fragrance industry about why don't you guys wear perfumes? Why don't you like orientals? Why don't you like strong things? Why don't you dress up and wear something mysterious? They like clean, they like simple. It is an Insta time of the world. Everything is instant. Everything is needs to be there and simple and done. And I had a conversation with one girl in particular and I said, you know, for me, someone being older, perfume is about a part of your personality that you can't see. It's about creating a mood. It's about 
wearing something that people can't see but they can feel and she's hit the nail on the head she goes well our age group we are an insta age we want everything in front of our face right there and then we move on we're very quick we have short attention spans she was an amazing girl i don't know who she is if you ever see this video it was me you spoke to and you explained it very succinctly about why millennials don't wear perfume anyway i digress a little bit the perfume glossy au is the simplest of light irises and then a white musk a clean lab produced molecule kind of smelling musk it would fit into the molecule brand for me i like complexity this is why it's on my disappointing list but i can imagine that this perfume would work well for a lot of people if you like that no perfume perfume type thing i feel like i've talked about this before anyway that's that one so what is the next discovery the next one is by Floris London and it's their Lily of the Valley perfume. Oh, this was really, really beautiful. I had some Floris samples. I tried a couple of them and I've been talking about Lily of the Valley with some of my colleagues recently about some good perfumes. So I tried this one and it was really good. It's got quite a lot of citrus in it. Perfect, powdery, clean Lily of the Valley. Not too fussy, not too overly complicated beautiful smell that doesn't feel dated. It's really, really nice. I really enjoyed it. I would consider buying it because I don't have a fragrance quite like that that just hits the Lily of the Valley theme on the head. So it's, yeah, not too complicated, beautiful, soapy Lily of the Valley with a bunch of citrus and I really enjoyed it. So it was a nice discovery, especially for warm weather. I can imagine myself wearing it. So that's that one. The next disappointment is by Zara and it's called White Flower Posy. I made it my business to go and try the four new fragrances that I saw advertised on Fragrantica. They've done this spring floral collection. I don't know, I tried three of the four because one they didn't have. One, the purple one smelled like Hypnos by Lancome. One was quite a nice Lily of the Valley actually, but this one, White Flower Posy, was a straight up synthetic jasmine. That's all it smelled like. It was one noted, there was no structure, there was no support notes, there was no character. And it, on top of that, it was kind of weak as well. So hugely disappointing. I did like one of the others, but White Flower Posy by Zara, which is one of their new perfumes, is a straight up jasmine. So hugely disappointing. For the price though, the next discovery is by Miguel Matos and it's called Miracle of Roses. My friend Claire, another YouTuber, she's Smurfy Girly by the way, we went to a perfume event two years ago uh, for a New York brand called Kieran. We both went to it. Well, afterwards, when we had drinks, she gave me a sample of this and I smelled it again. I smelled it briefly and then it just went somewhere and then I finally tried it. This is a great fiery, spicy cinnamon rose. Really full bodied, lots of texture. I really hope that he still sells it because I don't know with Miguel if he takes things away or not, I don't know, but he's a great um, niche independent perfumer that makes perfumes for other brands as well as his own. And Miracle of Roses is a really good punchy rose with tons of cinnamon. I've never really smelled cinnamon and rose together in quite a literal way. When I smelled it, it was, whoa, this is like the devil wearing a rose in his lapel. That's how I felt about it. So Miracle of Roses by Miguel Matos. The next disappointment is an Ely Saab perfume that was sent to me by my lovely friend Margie. She sent me a, quite a big sample of Kia Ylang by Ely Saab because she knows that I like Ylang Ylang and I'm trying to find uh, the perfect Ylang Ylang perfume. This one, however, was not it. And the main reason for that is, where's the Ylang Ylang, guys? This perfume is about leather and not really much about Ylang Ylang. It's further disappointing because the leather, the particular leather record that's in this one is that harsh, bitter, sharp leather that feels like plastic furniture. There's no smoothness, there's no sensuality to it. It's kind of not a mess, but it, it's verging on slightly unpleasant. And Ylang Ylang is this beautiful, 
smooth tropical flower that is just gives so much to a perfume and I just really struggled to find it. So when I saw the name, I thought, oh, leather and ylang, okay, I, I would like that. But really it's just, there is a floral element, but it definitely is not ylang ylang, not the ylang ylang that I know anyway. Even if the leather part of it was good, that might have been a saving grace, but it kind of wasn't. I just, I found the whole thing kind of unpleasant. So that's why it's on the disappointment list. The next discovery is a perfume by a English niche brand called Sarah Baker, but she's actually American. I've reviewed some of her other perfumes before in a spotlight. She's recently released five or six new ones, a new little collection. I tried all of them and one of them really stuck out. It's called Flame and Fortune. Oh my gosh, really, really good. This is a real big woody musk. It actually reminded me a little bit of Goddess by Aaron Terence Hughes, which is a recent uh, purchase I made because I fell in love with it. Big musk, big powdery sensual musk with sharper woods kind of piercing through them. Really, really enjoyable. This one has multiple things going on. I'm just looking at the notes. It's got a smoky note, it's got tuberose, pettigrain, orange blossom, apricot, liquor, ginger, labdanum, um, jasmine, iris, pepper, and lily of the valley. So it doesn't, to me, doesn't really feel super white floral. This was really about a, a kind of muskiness and it doesn't feel as smoky as the description might make it seem or the notes, but yeah. It, to me, it was more about sensuality and it was really tenacious and it filled the space around me quite a lot. I was very aware of it when I wore it. So Flame of Fortune by Sarah Baker. I did try all the others and that one really stuck out. I liked a couple of the others, but that was the discovery of that little sniffing session. And the last disappointment might get me in trouble with another YouTuber. It's Matt from Questioning Sense. He sent me a bunch of stuff after we had a discussion about a couple of brands and he insisted that I tried this perfume by Zershoff. It's called More Than Words. And Zershoff for me, or have you pronounce it, I always call it Jerkoff, I don't know. It's one of those luxury brands that I see in people's collections. I see sometimes people's collections where they have just a sea of Zershoff because, you know, look what I can afford. That's the way I see it, I'm sorry. That's just, just my opinion. But he insisted that I try this More Than Words perfume and when I tried it, to me, sorry Matt, I know you really like it and I know it's really expensive, but this to me was J-O, J-A-O, just another oud. It was overly sweet, it was overly choky, it smelled like a million other ouds that I've tried before. Um, I know Matt in particular is very fond of oud perfumes, so he's tried a lot, but it's, it was one of those instant reactions of this smells like a billion other oud perfumes that I've tried and add on top of it that it's overly sweet as well. It was the wrong type of oudy smell for me. It's a little bit too <laughs> and then it was gourmand on top. So to me that is a big no. If anyone likes it, I'm really sorry. I will try other perfumes that he sent me by Zershoff, but that one stuck out as being a this is so disappointing. It smelled like one of the Roger Ouds I've tried. It smelled like a Sospero Oud I've tried. It smelled like some of the Montau Ouds I've tried. It's just, there's a sea of perfumes out there that smell like this and to me there was nothing special about it. So that's why it's on the disappointment list. So what was the last discovery? A friend of mine, Sue, sent me a bunch of stuff by Sean Mayer. He's got two brands. He's got one called Mayer Olfactive and he's got one called On Chatillon. On Chatillon as well. I think it's the French word for sample, which I thought was On Chantillon, but never mind. He, I tried all of them. There were some really interesting things in there, but one of them stuck out a mile and it's called Weinstrasse. Weinstrasse, which is Wine Street. It's inspired by wine country in a certain part of America and when I tried it and I read the name of it for some reason it was clicking in my brain somewhere that I why have I heard of this perfume before and then while I was smelling it I realized it was a art and olfaction award finalist one of the years I think the most recent one this fragrance is amazing and it's so unassuming in its little tiny bottle with its like handwritten label not even handwritten but 
it's very rustic looking this one made me feel so many things it's very evocative of a place and the only way I can describe the way it smells is there's grape in it of course because it's about wine country but it's very summer haze floral think of things like dandelion wine think about bees pollinating things all around you and the dust that settles on the back of bees bodies it was very interesting i've still got the sample and i'm actually going to fully wear it on a very hot day i it was making me feel things i felt it reminded me of when i went to new zealand and i went to wine country there and the yellow flowers that were growing oh there's a reason why it was an Art and Olfaction finalist. There is a very strange part of it though. The first blast of it has this almost bleach smell, which smelled like someone's cleaned a table with bleach in the distance. Don't let that put you off. It was something that happened at the very beginning and then it already goes into this dusty kind of immortel, which I usually hate. I don't like immortel, but in this perfume it really works with you know, s dried flowers and summer heat and I don't know, just dandelions and just, I don't know, it, it was just really, really good. And I, it's already gone onto my wish list. I've put it onto my I Want This Perfume on Fragrantica shelf. So Weinstrasse by Enchotillon. I'll put the name and the logo in the video because yeah, it's by Sean Mayer anyway. So great that one is so great and that is the end of this video that is the end of my discoveries and disappointments of things that i smelled in june i've been trying more things in july so i'll do that one too some point in the future hope you guys are enjoying your day i'm out tomorrow trying to make the world tomorrow better one video at a time i'll see you guys soon goodbye